Want to visit one of Europe's hidden gems? This city isn't usually on people's travel bucket lists. I'm in Riga, the capital of Latvia. Admittedly, I don't really know that much about the city, so I'm excited to see how much I can learn and explore in just one day. I'm going to be checking out some beautiful architecture, learning about the city and its history, and trying some traditional Latvian cuisine. So let's get going. First off of the day, breakfast. Riga has loads of traditional small pastry shops. Everything just looked so good that I couldn't help myself, and we're trying loads. And cottage cheese seems to be a bit of a thing here. I keep seeing cottage cheese pastries everywhere, so definitely want to try these. That's really good. Not too sweet, a little bit savoury. Good start to the day. OK, now I'm all fueled up for the day. Let's do some sightseeing. My favourite way to explore a new city is just to walk around, get a little bit lost, and it really helps me get a feel for the place. I'm starting off in the medieval old town, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The House of the Blackheads is one of the main attractions here in Riga. It was built way back in the 14th century for the Brotherhood of Blackheads, which was a guild for unmarried merchants. The original building was bombed by the Germans in World War II, and the remains were demolished by the Soviets in 1948, but it was fully restored in the late 90s. And this also happens to be the spot where the first ever Christmas tree was decorated. There is so much amazing architecture in the city. There are hundreds of Art Nouveau buildings that were built during the 19th and 20th centuries. Now I want to see what the city skyline looks like. I'm going to head to the top of Hotel Latvia because I've heard that I can get an amazing view of the whole city. The best thing about this view is that it's entirely free of charge. You can see the whole city skyline from up here. Time for some greenery. It's early afternoon now, the perfect time to hang out in Riga's Bastion Hill Park. It's super beautiful, so quiet and peaceful, with lots of locals and tourists alike, just hanging out. This huge landmark right in the middle of the park is Riga's Freedom Monument. It's dedicated to the national heroes who fought for their country's freedom between 1918 and 1920. Freedom is an important topic here in Latvia, a country that's been occupied for much of its existence. To find out more about the city's history, I'm heading to the newly reopened Museum of the Occupation of Latvia. Why is freedom such an important topic for Latvians? I think you appreciate freedom more when you have lost it. Latvia gained it after World War I. There was independence war with a lot of sacrifice, and then uh, Latvia lost independence after 22 years, and then regained it again in 1991. And uh, you don't take it for granted once you lose it. Latvia suffered under Soviet rule for 50 years, during which people lived under constant surveillance and weren't even allowed to speak their own language. There were mass deportations during this period and thousands of people were killed. Because independence was only regained fairly recently, many Latvians have a personal connection to the fight for freedom. The biggest demonstration was in 1989, on August 23. A human chain called the Baltic Way. Almost two million people joined hands uh, from uh, Tallinn, 
this highway through Riga to Vilnius, Lith, uh, capital of Lithuania, almost 700 kilometers. So I was standing in that chain. Um, it was for just for very brief moments, but that feeling that you're you're united in three countries, yeah, uh, and you're all standing for the same cause in solidarity. And what's wonderful, this uh, chain idea has been exported. In Hong Kong 2016, they did this chain in Minsk, Belarus, and many other places. And they, they have told us, we copied your idea. So I'm happy that uh, from the small Baltic countries, we could export this way of uh, nonviolent resistance. Before my day here comes to a close, I have one more stop. Now that we've seen a lot of the city and learned about its history, it's time to try some more local food. This market is considered one of, if not the biggest food market in the whole of Europe. There's so much on offer here, from fresh fruits and vegetables to a whole array of meat and fish and small places to grab some plates. Since Riga is so close to the sea, fish is very traditional here. So that's what I'm going to try for dinner. All right. This is the famous black balsam drink. It's essentially a national drink here in Latvia, but it's 45%, so... I'm expecting it to be pretty strong. Cheers. Ooh. It's actually nice. <laughs> but pretty strong. Tastes like aniseed. Okay, let's eat something before I get too drunk. I'm trying salmon, herring, and anchovies. Got beetroot here as well. Super good. Really fresh. <sighs> well, that's the end of my day in Riga. I've had such a great time here, just walking around, learning about the city and exploring. And the people here are super friendly. It's also cheaper than a lot of other European cities. Have I missed anything important? Let me know what your travel tips for Riga are in the comments. And for now, cheers.